Good morning. We gather here today on Good Friday for a time of reflection to look upon the cross. And I often say that for me, this is the most important day of the year. And I've had a discussion with Rowley about this and we talk about whether it's Easter Day or whether it's Good Friday. Uh, but this is the day of our salvation. This is the day when Christ died for our sin and made a way for us. And uh, yes, then through resurrection, uh, we have that sure and certain hope. But today we look at the cross, a symbol of suffering, a symbol of death. But for those who believe it is also a symbol of immense love and sacrifice. And as we hear accounts of Jesus being betrayed, his trial, his agonizing journey to Calvary, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the darkness of the day. And we might question why? Why? Why would an innocent man endure such pain? And the answer lies at the very heart of our faith. Jesus, the Son of God, took on the burden of our sin. He became the bridge between humanity and God absorbing the weight of all our wrong and mess. His death on the cross was the ultimate act of love, a demonstration of God's unwavering desire for our redemption. So we're going to sing some songs this morning. We're going to read some words of scripture. And the first song is, My Song is Love Unknown.
read from Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 12. This passage from the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, foretells the events of Good Friday. And yet it was written some 700 plus years before the event. And we need to bear that in mind, how God's prophet foretold what was going to happen seven, 750 years before it happened. Listen to these words, Isaiah 53, starting at verse 4. He suffered and endured great pain for us. But we thought his suffering was punishment from God. He was wounded and crushed because of our sins. By taking our punishment, he made us completely well. All of us were like sheep that had wandered off. We had each gone our own way. But the Lord gave him the punishment we deserved. He was painfully abused, but he did not complain. He was silent, like a lamb being led to the butcher, as quiet as a sheep having his wool cut off. He was condemned to death without a fair trial. Who could have imagined what would happen to him? His life was taken away because of the sinful things my people had done. He wasn't dishonest or violent, but he was bruised in the to sorry, he was buried in the tomb among cruel, rich people. The Lord decided his servant would suffer as a sacrifice to take away the sin and the guilt of others. Now the servant will live to see his own descendants. He did everything the Lord had planned. By suffering, the servant will learn the true meaning of obeying the Lord. Although he is innocent, he will take the punishment for the sins of others, so that many of them will no longer be guilty. The Lord will reward him with honor and power for sacrificing his life. Others thought he was a sinner, but he suffered our sins and asked God to forgive us. It was hard to understand even though you spoke plainly. It was hard to accept that you were to suffer and die. So many had plans for you. Ways that you would save this or establish that. Or restore whatever it was we felt needed restoring. Unaware that all along, we were the ones who needed saving. The cost for our souls would be so immense that you knew we would never understand it until we saw it with our own eyes. The cost for saving all who would accept the need to be saved would be on a hill of terrible suffering, a cross of unthinkable pain, an unbearable punishment and destiny that was meant for us and you took all because you love us. So let's go to the, the table in the upper room. Yeah. Let's go to the table in the upper room, to Luke 22, 
And starting at the second part of verse 26. Where Jesus says, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. And the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater? The one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times that you ever knew me. We sing once again.
having had time at the table. They then left and went down the valley. And we take up the story in Luke chapter 22 at verse 39. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer, he went back to the disciples and found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up. And the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. And Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Let's bow in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, on this day of sorrow, we gather before you with heavy hearts. We remember the suffering your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, endured on the cross. We reflect on the pain he bore. We reflect on the humiliation he faced. We reflect on that moment when he went into hell. We reflect on the immense love that compelled him to sacrifice himself for our sins. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have forgotten the weight of our Saviour's sacrifice. Forgive us for our shortcomings and our tendency to turn away from your light. May the sight of the cross remind us of the depth of your love and the power of your grace. And Lord, grant us the strength to carry that message of Christ's love into the world. 
Help us to live with compassion, with forgiveness, and with a renewed dedication to follow your teachings. As we await the joy of Easter Sunday, fill our hearts with hope and the promise of resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Luke 23, verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out to be executed. And when they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the two criminals one on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let's see him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are here under the same sentence, we are punished justly. We are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Jesus answered, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. As we stop at the foot of the cross, let's sing when I survey the wondrous cross.
Luke 23, starting at verse 44. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But those who know, knew him, including the women, who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance and watched these things. Supper with Marcellus. Thank the gods it's Friday, said Marcellus to his wife. He tossed his toga from him. I'm so weary, what a life. Got paid 200 denarii, he said, yawning. But what a day. An awful crucifixion up Jerusalem way, three of them together, two of them proper thieves, the other one a rebel, ha, huh, that I can't believe. I've never seen a man before with such a gentle face. I've never seen such bravery ever any place. Pilate chose me for it, wanted it over fast, thought there might be trouble, but nothing to the last. 
That man faced death so calmly. Some said that he was mad. But as I struck, he looked at me, and all I felt was bad. Pilate gave the orders, and it's my job to obey. But I still feel like a traitor for what I did today. I've never liked this region, nor the work. It gets me down. I'll transfer from my legion to Damascus. That's the town. Remember my friend's letter? He insisted I should call. And promotion there's much better. He's a tribune now, is Saul. I'll see him in the morning. I'll ask to join his men. Today was like a warning not to do Pilate's dirty work again. words from Hebrews Hebrews chapter 4 and this passage from Hebrews speaks of Jesus being our great high priest verse 14 we have a great high priest who has gone into heaven and he is Jesus the son of God this is why we must hold on to what we have said about him. Jesus understands our every weakness because he was tempted in every way that we are. But he did not sin. So whenever we are in need, we should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. There we will be treated with undeserved grace and we will find help.
Down in the town at 11 o'clock is the service outside St Mary's or inside, depending on the rain. And they meet for teas and coffees in the hall beforehand. And then we meet at nine on Sunday for communion and breakfast and our Easter service. Let's pray. Almighty God, as we leave this place of reflection on the sacrifice of your son. We carry the weight of his suffering, but also the hope of his promise. Thank you for the overwhelming love you have shown us through Christ's death on the cross. Lord, forgive us our sins that have contributed to his pain. May the weight of the cross we have contemplated today transform our hearts. Grant us the strength to live a life worthy of sacrifice. Fill us with your love and guide us to share it with the world. As we walk into the coming days, knowing the promise of resurrection awaits, keep us steadfast in our faith, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen.